the next ply that I'm going to tie is the next sequence of the life stage of a caddis fly, which is the pupa. And this fly is called the seed bead sparkle pupa. The smaller glass beads are commonly known as seed beads, hence the name. We're going to use silver lined green beads, small. They're inside as the underbody. The overbody is Clark's tying yarn, macrame yarn, in a sand color. The legs are brown partridge fibers. The wings are brown ostrich hurl. And the head is uh, olive brown dubbing. OK, so let's break this down step by step. The hook is Daiichi 1250. It's the glass bead hook that I was using on the previous pattern. We're going to skew on about four beads this time. Get a couple more. Whoops. That happens. One of the things you might want to do when you're going to tie a series of these is to just spend a little bit of time loading the beads on your hook, like do six at a time, and then go back and complete the fly. So that's four beads on there now. OK. We're going to do the bead locking technique again. So I'm going to start my ultra fine translucent thread in front of the beads. And I want to make sure I leave plenty of room for the legs and the wings and the head. I think I'm going to go back a little bit more. That ought to do it. Come to the back. OK. That's the ender body. Again, Clark's tying yarn in a sand color this time. Uh, I'm going to thin out a little bit of this. I don't need quite so much. That looks pretty good. Tie one strand on the top of the hook behind the beads. Trim off the excess. Secure that down. OK, now we're going to rotate the fly upside down. And I'm fortunate enough to, to have a rotary vise to roll the fly upside down, which happens to be a Dynaking Sinewinder vise. And if you're looking for a, a nice rotary vise, this is a smooth uh, rotating vise that works very well. And you can adjust uh, the hook uh, to the right axis so that you get smooth rotation. Okay, I'm adding this next piece of yarn at the bottom. And it's going to go underneath, trim off. Trimming off the butts is not of the yarn is not real critical because you're going to pull the yarn over the top of them anyways, but just enough to get everything in place. Okay, now go ahead and make a couple of wraps in between the beads, lock them in. Let's go ahead and rotate the vise up, upside down again, rotate the fly upside down rather, and pull the the yarn, you want to make it a little bit loose. You don't want them real tight against the beads. Okay. Trim off the excess yarn. Rotate the fly right side up again. Bring the other top yarn fibers up over the top. 
And as you see, as I push back towards the back of the hook, you can see the fiber sort of poof up a little bit. And you want a little bit of give on that. Yeah. Trim off the excess. Let's take a little look here, what we've got so far. Okay, you can see that the yarn somewhat envelopes the beads underneath, and the beads kind of shine through there, and that's what you want. Hope I left enough room here for the rest of my materials. I'm going to probably be a little bit short, but I think I can swing it. Okay, then the next thing will be the partridge fiber for the legs. And I'm going to strip off the fluff out of my way. I'm going to grab some of these other fibers and strip them off. And tie this in what usually is, these will be the legs, but it'll be beard style, meaning the fibers will be tied underneath the bottom of the hook. Like so. Trim off the excess at the front. Do a little bit of pushing there to get them underneath like I want them. Okay, we're going to add the, the uh, wings, which is just a, some brown ostrich hurl. in the right position here. Okay, I'm going to pair of these, so I'm going to put one on this side. And one on the other side, sort of at the top. Okay, trim off that excess. Catch all these fibers off the ostrich hurl and go over the top of them. Now we're ready to complete the fly with a little bit of dubbing. Olive brown dubbing. Work with a little bit at a time. It's always easier to work a little bit and add more as you go than it is to put a big wad on there and just make a big mess. Again, just twist it on one direction, catch it around the front there, tighten it some more. Okay, now I've got enough on there, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of tease this off okay, away from the thread. I can go back and trim that off later. I'm going to go ahead and finish this to complete it. Lock that thread into place. Trim off that little bit of extra dubbing. And that completes the seed bead sparkle pupa. Now, the pupa is what you might consider, well, it's what you, what you would consider the emerging stage of an aquatic insect. So the, 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 uh, the appendages of the insect are still immature. The wings are just kind of budding out. And the insect is making its way to the surface to fly away as an adult. So the preceding stage after this would be the the adult stage, which would then be the dry fly stage. You can use other different colors of beads inside, like orange or brown. Again, when you're fishing a piece of water, usually if you're, if you're familiar with a place where you fish, you might want to investigate the colors of the, the different species of aquatic insects and then apply the color of beads accordingly. 
And again, this can be downsized to, to the extra small size beads on smaller hooks. This pattern is especially effective when tied on size 16 and 14 hooks.